Welcome to part five of my simple maze game tutorials. Uh, you'll see uh, in this tutorial we're going to be adding a, a different object to the game. Uh, we're going to use treasure because you know, all good dungeons and, and mazes need some treasure. And uh, we're just going to walk through. This one's going to be a little bit different uh, because in this case the treasure is something that can disappear. You know, in, in a previous example we put some walls in. The walls are always there. We don't, we don't move those around. Those are really non-interactive objects. Um, now treasure doesn't really do a lot, um, but we can, uh, how can I put it? Um, if we wanted to, we, this is the same principle we would use for like an enemy fighter. Um, an enemy fighter might move around the maze and, and that sort of thing. Um, but what we want to do here is we want to just have a static object um, and instead of stamping it, we're going to actually make a, a new turtle for that. Okay, so take a look and let's see what it's going to look like when we're done. Okay, so you watch over here. Okay, so that's going to be our treasure. That's That yellow dot uh, represents uh, the treasure. So I can move my character oops, over to here. And let's see what happens if I get that. Okay, so I touched it. It's gone. And... I got 100 gold for uh, opening up that chest, let's say. Okay, so that's kind of the concept that's going on here. So we have to do a couple things. We have to actually put it on the screen. We'll have to create it, put it on the screen, check to see if the player has touched it. And if so, you know, get the gold, get rid of the, the treasure. Okay, so this is kind of a, a common thing you see in a game, of course. Um, so as before, we're going to start with the class. And this class will be some new features, but I'll show you those in a second here. Um, so again, we start with our class definition. I'm calling this one treasure. Again, it is a child of the Teradol class. Uh, and so we initialize both parent class and child class, or parent class and the child class. Now, you'll notice in our initializing function, we have X and Y. Okay, I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so this is where we want the treasure to appear. So we're making our, our code a little bit more advanced. So again, like before, we chose the shape of a circle. Color is going to be gold, pens up, maximum speed. We've also said that this particular treasure has gold. Okay, let's say 100 gold pieces, for example. And when we initialize it, when we create it, we want it to go to whatever these X and Y coordinates are. And I'll get to this one in a second, destroy. Okay. Um, now I've also added um, gold to the player. So when the game starts, the player has zero gold. So I've created my player class, treasure, sorry, my treasure class, go in, and how am I, when and how am I going to create the actual instance? Um, so this is where it gets a little bit interesting. Um, now our games only have one player, so that was pretty easy. So we created uh, our player here. But what we want to, we're going to have, let's say in our game, we might have 10 or 15 different treasure boxes that we want to have. So we can't just do it like this, you know, treasure one, treasure two, treasure three. We're going to do what we did with the uh, walls. We're going to make a list. So again, it's, it's good practice just to make your life easy. We're going to use a list, name it something plural. Okay, so treasures. Uh, even if the English isn't, you know, perfect, uh, that's all right. So just make it plural. And then this is an empty list. So when the game starts, we have no treasures. But what I did was I said, okay, I'm going to use the letter T to represent treasure. So I put a T here. And I could also even put one down here, it doesn't matter. Um, but just for now, we'll do that. So what I'm gonna do is, in my code where I set up the maze, just like we did with the player, I'm gonna check, is the T, if it's a T, um, my treasures list, I'm gonna append a treasure, that's the treasure class. Now remember, we had X and we had Y, okay? So I want it to appear at screen X and screen Y. So that screen X is sent to here. Self comes from the item itself. So the X is going to be screen X and Y is going to be screen Y. So that'll put the treasure there. So that's why it appears at that spot. Okay. Um, so wherever the equivalent spot on the screen is, it appears. Okay. So I've added it to the list. Next thing. So once it's added to the list, 
then I have to check to see if the player is touching it. Now what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to base it on the distance. I'm not going to use the exact coordinates. Now the reason for that is, is so that later if we decide to add uh, moving objects, they don't have to be perfectly moving uh, in you know, 24, 24, 24. We might have something that's moving 12 steps at a time. Now I'll give it a little bit more fluid animation. Um, so what I've done is I've used the Pythagorean theorem to calculate the distance. So in my player class, I've added a new method called isCollision. So when you see is, that tells you it's probably going to be returning a true or a false. So this is the math. Um, this is just you know a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It's a little bit of basic math. So I'm calculating a, which is the x coordinate. Don't forget the parentheses of self, which is in this case is the player, and other. So in this, we're talking about treasure. So it'd be the treasure. So it's x coordinate minus x coordinate, y coordinate minus y coordinate. And then we use a little bit of math. The distance calculation is math dot square root a squared plus b squared. And again, that's the Pythagorean theorem. Um, now if that distance is less than 5, I just chose 5 as, as you know, a number. You don't want to be too small, you don't want to be too big. Um, but if it's less than 5, that tells us that there has been a collision. That means that they are overlapping to some extent and return true. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. So we're checking is the location of the self, in this case the player, and the location of the other, are they really close? Are they less than five pixels? If so, yeah, they're, they're probably touching, and that's a collision. So the way I use that is in my main loop. Okay. Now this has to go in the loop because we want the program to keep checking continuously for um, updates. Okay. So I'm not, I can't remember if I explained this in a previous video, but you see I, I use something called Tracer. What this does is this stops the screen animation completely, and then inside the loop I tell it to update. So I'm going to do all my code here, so once everything's been updated, then I'm actually going to display it. So that's a little, little side thing there. Um, so, anyway, so for treasure in treasures, this is a loop. So if I have five pieces of treasure, it's going to check. Okay, So it'll check treasure one, then treasure two, then treasure three, treasure four, treasure five. Uh, right now we only have one. So if the player, because remember we put it in the player class, is collision, so it collides with the treasure, okay, so it's the x coordinate minus the x coordinate of that, y coordinate minus y coordinate, calculate the distance. If there's a collision, if it's true, player gold is increased plus equals by treasure gold. So however much gold the treasure has goes to the player. And I'm, for now I'm just using print instead of displaying it on the screen. Um, and then I want the treasure to destroy itself. So that means I want the treasure off the screen. Uh, I don't want to be able to see it, and I need to move it. Okay. Um, and then I need to remove the treasure from the treasures list that we've been using. Okay, so that it's a two-step process. Now notice this destroy method, which is what I put up here in the treasure class. So destroy itself. So there's no way I could find to actually destroy a turtle in the Python's memory. I think it's a limitation of the turtle module. So I'm just moving it off the screen. So the screen, remember, is like it's about 350 this way. So I'm moving it way off the screen, and I'm also hiding it. So it's off the screen. We don't have to worry about it anymore. Okay. Um, I'm also removing it from the list. So the list gets shorter each time. And what that looks like is this. And if you watch some of my other videos, you can see how to add sound and, and that sort of thing. And then my player gold went up. Um, some of my other videos also talk to you about how to like display text on the screen. Uh, I just wanted to kind of get this started uh, so you can kind of get some basis and foundation for a maze type game. All right, that is that. Got uh, another one.